Good morning and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to cover brood in the flow frames and how to fix it. Now this is something that doesn't happen very often so it's a, it's a bit of a rare thing but I was harvesting some honey yesterday just a little bit of honey out of this frame here and what I noticed was a couple of little crescent moons in the honey jar, little crescent moon grubs and I straight away recognized them as very young larvae. So what we're going to do is get in here and investigate and I'll show you how to fix it. Now there's two things that could cause that. One is the queen is above the excluder, which is this excluder here where the queen is supposed to be down the bottom doing a thing, laying on the wooden wax frames down below. But what's possibly happened is when she's small, perhaps she's a, a young queen, not full size yet, she's squeezed her way up and gotten stuck in the top box here and then that's the only place she could lay. So that's one scenario. The other scenario is there isn't a queen at all and the brood was actually drones because worker bees can actually start laying if there isn't a queen but they lay unfertilized eggs which turn into drones or the male bees. So we're going to investigate, pull the hive apart and see which one of those two scenarios it is and then we'll get on to fixing that. If you've got questions put them in the comments below and we'll answer them uh, as we go. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Okay so first thing get your smoker going Blow a little smoke into the front of the hive, which I've already done, and protect yourself. So make sure you're wearing a good bee suit and also look after those around you. Okay, so put a little bit more smoke in. We're going to be working on this hive for a while. It'd be good if they were nice and calm. Next, off comes the gabled roof. Then we can pop the top like this. Now because there's possibly a queen up here above the excluder, I need to have a quick scan here in case I see her right on top here. Can't see her. You can see one hive beetle running around, a little black beetle there. Another one there. Sorry, hive beetle, but this is not the place for you. There we go. Okay, so in case I missed her, I'll do what we usually do and lean this up against the corner of the hive here so the bees can walk in if they need to. Next, we're going to pull this frame out by getting the chisel end under here. So this is how you lift out the flow frames. The hook end under here, or J end, and slowly coming up. Okay, and there you have it. We do have brood right in the flow frames. So it looks different to honey. I'll just shake these bees off. Now, bearing in mind there could be a queen on here, so I'm gonna have a quick look for a queen. And just in case she happens to be right here. But if I shake these bees down, you'll be able to get a good look at the brood. So here you can see that's brood, not honey. The capping is more translucent when it's honey. And down, if you look down the cells, give us a thumbs up if you can see the larvae, which is a shining little grub down there. So, I suspect these are drones and the hive doesn't have a queen. The reason why I suspect that is because I'm looking down these cells and I can see eggs laid part way down the cell, like a tiny little grain of rice part way down the cell. Now the queen should be putting the egg at the bottom because she has a longer 
longer tail which you can reach all the way down there. So it's a bit harder to tell in this flow frame whether it's drones or workers because of the, the depth of the cells is deeper. So we don't really, we haven't positively identified whether they're drones or workers yet. So what I'm going to do is put that frame aside and I'll look at the next frame. And then what we're going to do is have a look in the bottom. If there's, if there's no, uh, I suspect there'll be no brood at all in the bottom box, but let's have a see. So that one is full of honey. Look at that, beautiful. Okay. The next one's full of honey and the next one's full of honey. So it's happened fairly recently and it's just in one of the frames so far. So if the queen is up here, then it's a case of just putting her down below the excluder and putting the hive back together and that's the fix. And then she'll be laying in the correct spot. If there is no queen at all, then what we'll need to do is rectify that situation by either purchasing in a queen from a queen breeder, which is what I'd recommend, but often you can't get that happening in a hurry. So the next best thing to do is to take a frame of brood from another hive and put it in the bottom box here. And if it's got eggs on it, they'll raise a queen from that egg. Okay, interesting. So what we might do is pop this whole honey super off and put it aside and now have a look at the brood. So to do that, I might just add a bit more, a bit more smoke in the hive here. And then we're going to get our chisel and separate these two boxes. Looks like the excluder wants to stay behind. We're just going to go around to each corner. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. You might be able to get the excluder off with the, with the super there. Let's see. And it's a case of just loosening it all up until we can pull that off. Now, this can be heavy, so look after yourself as you do that. Just going to put it down over here on its end like that. That way we don't squash any bees as we put it down. But now we're into the brood nest. Straight away I'm looking and seeing there's not a whole lot going on down here. So we're going to chisel the frames apart and start pulling them out and looking at them and identifying what's going on. For those that are just tuning in, we've got some brood in the flow frames, a, a, a rare event, but seeing as we've found it, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you because we do get the quite occasional question about that. Okay. What we've got here is a lot of pollen. Look at that, huge amounts of pollen. That's a nice thing, but no brood at all. Put that frame aside. We didn't um, put our frame rest this time, but that's okay. We'll just put it on the ground like we used to do. Next, we have more pollen. Down the cells, you can see the bee bread they're making. Look at that lovely pollen on that bee there. Bright yellow but no sign of any brood. So we're just gonna keep going towards the center and check for brood all the way through. Pollen, no brood. Okay, so I'm pretty sure there's no laying queen down the bottom here, which is what we suspected. go. No brood, just pollen and a tiny bit of nectar. They're pretty hungry at the moment. Not a whole lot of nectar coming in. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. 
we'll get to answering those. Again, pollen, no sign of any brood down here. So I suspect that the queen is up the top and what we were looking at was a mixture of drone brood and worker brood in the flow frames. The reason why I suspect that is if it was a queenless hive with laying workers, they would also be laying down the bottom here in these cells. There's no sign of any brood down here. There's no sign of any eggs. Look at the size of these cells. This is incredible. It's right in the middle of the brood nest and they've made all huge size cells for honey storage or for drones. And then over in this corner, very small cells for worker brood. It's amazing how they're able to morph from one size to the other without any real point at which you can see the change between the two sizes. It's just this slow, perfect morphing. Incredible architecture. Next uh, frame here. Again, no sign of any eggs. Just a little bit of nectar in these cells, which is good. Something for the bees to eat, seeing there's not a whole lot around at the moment. Might as well keep going and check these last couple of frames. Ah, one single drone cell. Now that's a confusing thing to see. So the gestation of a drone is 16 days. So it's possible that um, that is an egg left over from before. Because there's no other sign of any eggs anywhere. So that means this hive, the queen has started laying in the top in the last 16 days. Okay. Next one. Now that's a pretty ratty old comb. It's got a little bit of honey in it. I was tempted just to chop that out till I saw the honey, which they are very hungry at the moment. But this is on the edge here, so we might cycle that out soon, just because it's not a very well-formed piece of comb there. And it's, it's quite old and dark. So to, if we were going to cycle it out, all we'd do is shake off the bees, just chop that out with a kitchen knife, take it away, don't let the bees get to it, and put the empty frame back in the middle. One of the benefits of foundationless frames is you don't have to go through that process in the shed, waxing and wiring the frame again. You can just chop it out and put the frame straight back in again. Okay, I don't want to take that last little bit of honey away, seeing as they are a bit hungry though. So there we go. Uh, what we need to do to rectify this situation is shake all the bees off the flow frames. If we found the queen, we could just put her in the bottom and that would be the fix, put the excluder back on. But because we may not find the queen, what we can do is just shake all the bees downstairs. And that way, what will happen is uh, the queen will end up in the bottom and all we need to do then is wait a month for any, um, wait about 16, uh, 21 days for the worker bees, 16 for the drones, for them to emerge. And basically the problem will be fixed by itself as soon as the queen is down the bottom. The brood silk won't actually affect the flow frames. The bees are just getting a little bit antsy. I noticed them starting to give me little warning uh, flights. So I'm gonna put a little bit more smoke in the hive. Any questions coming in, Chase? Yes, Ada, it's great actually. There's a few tips as well. Chuck Rao, our ambassador, is giving tips on what um, he does with the Queen Excluder. And also um, Carmel here um, is, is wondering too whether the Queen Excluder maybe when it was taken off from a previous inspection, um, was, it, was it put on upside down and so the Queen sort of ended up in the top rather than the bottom and then she's just saying she always shakes the bees off and then turns, make sure she's got the queen excluder going around the right way when she's popped it in. So that's a good little tip too. Yeah, a great tip there. Yeah. So, so yes, you could not notice that the queen is walking around on the excluder and put it the wrong way up. 
Yeah. So shaking all the bees off, as you say, a great idea there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put this frame back in and that way we'll have our hive back together and we can focus on getting all the bees into the bottom box. Now before I do that, I'm going to squash the frames up so any excess space is on the edges like we always do to make sure the spacing is right for the bees. There's generous space in the, in the flow hives, which is great because often conventional 10 frame length shot hives are way too tight and it's a bit hard to work them. So we've made a little bit more space in our hive, which is handy and you'll appreciate it as the frames get used and all of the end bars get gummed up. You'll appreciate that bit of extra space. Okay. So, now it's a process of taking out all of the flow frames and brushing or shaking all of the bees into the brood box. We'll have a little look as we go in case we can spot the queen. But we'll start with just the uh, frame we already have out. This is the one that has the brood on it. So you can see the brood there. So the queen could be on this frame somewhere. So what we're going to do is just shake them off. Now, with a piece of foliage or a bee brush, which I'll just grab, we can brush the last ones in. Okay. So, you don't have to get every last one, but you need to identify that the queen is not on the frame, which you can just have a quick look at the last ones running around and go, that's not the queen, that's not the queen, we're good. I'm just going to put these frames aside as we go. And we're going to have a good look at this excluder, make sure there's no damage to it. There's no uh, breaks where a queen could get through. And like you were saying, have a little look. Make sure the queen's not existing on there and shake the last bees right into the box. And we can put the excluder aside too. All right. Next, we're going to upend this box. No bees on the bottom side at the moment, so it's a nice time just to tip it over. And we're going to pull out all the frames, have a quick look for the queen, and brush them into the bottom box. Any more questions coming in? Yeah, so it's Andrew's uh, tuning in, just asking, has a 10 frame box, so seven flow frames and 10 broom frames, just curious, the four middle frames appears that there's no honey, whereas the other frames are all, there's quite a lot of honey in it. There seems to be a decent flow on and the cells are all properly centred. Just wondering if you've got any thoughts on why those four middle frames, they're not putting any honey into it. Okay, now it's probably in a bit of an arch like this above the brood nest. If they're filling the top and there's an arch left there above the brood nest, that's the bit they're consuming right now to feed the brood because they use a frame of honey to raise a frame of brood. So if there's, if there's not lots and lots of nectar coming in, um, they will just use that bit there, sometimes above the brood nest. And as time goes on, they'll fill that back in again. So have a look as the season progresses and just see if they fill in those middle frames. Okay, shaking the bees off again, brushing the bees in, and that way if the queen was on there, she'd be now in the bottom box. Hot, sweaty day here in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, Let us know what the temperature's like where you are. Yeah, we've got a few US customers saying how cold it is where they are. 
Okay, we've got a whole lot more honey there. And no sign of a queen that I can see, but I'm having a quick look anyway. Look around the edges and we'll shake them in. And that got most of them off. A bit of foliage, a feather or a bee brush. To brush the last ones off and put that one aside. Well, the good news is there's quite a lot of honey in this top box, which is great considering it's a bit of a hungry time. Again, looking for a queen. Be nice to spot her so we could really know. Okay. A few hive beetles there. Now this colony is going to be a little bit weak. So, good idea to activate the hive beetle trap at the bottom, catch a few of those pesky hive beetles. Any more uh, questions coming in? Yes, so it's a question coming and asked about the queen. So if you don't spot the queen and then you uh, purchase a new queen and put a queen in the bottom part, will that mean the box will run with two queens or what will sort of happen? Uh, no, because you've shaken all of the bees down, if there was a queen, she would end up in the bottom. So what you'd be doing is introducing a queen into the brood box where there's already an existing queen and the existing queen would kill the new queen coming in. So, uh, or the bees themselves would. So that's um, what would happen there. So you may not notice, all you'd notice is your hive is doing fine and it's got a queen. So, um, unless the queen is marked with a special color that you can identify. Uh, and that's why you're shaking them all in to try and get that queen so that you'll know then. That's right. If yeah. we shake them all in, we know that the queen is going to end up in the bottom. Having a quick look. Sometimes you just don't have time to go through and find the queen in amongst all of the bees. But we'll look anyway. Okay, not much honey in this outside frame. No brood either. So there was just one single frame in the whole hive that had brood and it was a flow frame. So let's assume that that means there's a laying queen in the top box. So perhaps she was a little bit small and snuck through the excluder. She wasn't quite at full size yet. Can happen. A little tiny queen and now she's laying in the top. And okay. did you mention two seeds at the start that it could have been a drone, did you say? Could have been uh, laying workers. So ah. there's two scenarios. One is the queen has somehow gotten into the top box. That could happen by her sneaking through the excluder when she's small, or that she's gone on a mating flight, come back to the hive, and there's a hole somewhere on the top box that she's gotten into, and then she's laying in the wrong area above the excluder. And that means um, it's a case of just either finding the queen and putting her in the bottom box under the excluder or shaking all the bees down to make sure that if you missed her, she ended up in the bottom box. So that's what we're doing now. But the other thing that could cause brood in the flow frames is there's no queen at all and the workers are laying and those, uh, that brood will end up being unfertilized eggs and be male bees, the drone bees. So if you saw a whole lot of drones all around the hive, all in the bottom, all in the flow frames, you'd go, that's laying workers, no sign of any female bees, the hive is queenless. So there are your two scenarios where you can get brood in the flow frames. I didn't see any other brood here, so I'm assuming that that little bit of brood in the top was actually laid by a queen. Otherwise, the workers would also be laying in the bottom box. So there must be a queen here somewhere. And she could choose either to lay drones 
and the cells are bigger so she might just lay drones in the top or she could lay a mix depending on her preference. Okay, just looking again. And can't see a queen here. Shake all the bees off. Got a good amount of honey there, which is nice. Brush off the last ones again. Make sure that we don't miss a queen. And we've got Peter's just tuned in from Hungary. It's midnight and Peter was about to go to bed but saw you were doing Facebook Live, so we've kept him awake and he's in Hungary. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Hi Peter. <laughs> Thanks Peter for tuning in. It's so amazing to have people from all over the world just tuning into the live stream and learning together and helping each other and uh, it's so great that uh, there's all these questions in the thread and people are helping each other by answering the questions. It's um, just such an amazing thing to have such a big global beekeeping community. Okay. Where is she? Where is the queen? Where's Wally or where's Waldo? <laughs> Alright, I didn't spot her today. Last one. Shaking the bees off, brushing the bees off. And she also could be on the hive wood parts, which we'll have a look at just in a second. Some queens are pretty, pretty cunning, they'll hide in corners. So you've still got a whole lot of bees here, which we better have a look at before we shake them. I've got so much sweat in my eyes. It's hard to uh, see properly, <laughs> it's very hot here. Okay. Can't see her on that face. Have a good look over here, just in case. And looks like the most likely scenario is we have missed her. Just having a look, sometimes it'll be in amongst a ball of bees that she's hiding. Need my sister here, she's a pro queen spotter. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing when you see someone that's really good at queen spotting. I'm okay, but people that are really good can be standing several meters back and just by the motion of the bees, they will detect that that's where the queen is. Just by how all the other bees are behaving around her. So it's uh, definitely an art form that, that develops over time. Okay. We're going to shake these last bees in and then we can start putting the hive back together. And that's how we fix brood in the flow frames. Good. Now we need the excluder back on. So assuming the queen is now down below, we can brush all the bees in Put our excluder back on and away we go again. This time the queen shouldn't be able to get back up because she'll now be a bit bigger. So this grid lets worker bees through but not the queen. Next our super goes on which is now empty. So any bees coming up through the excluder can't be a grown queen. Getting that nice and square on the hive and now we're good to go, putting all of these frames back in again. So that's a nice one. We might put this one right on the window. It's got a beautiful amount of honey in it. And... Seeds, do they have to go in the same order, like the brood, or it's not so important? 
not so important, but do make sure when you put it in that there's enough space here for the bees to get through. See that? So it's, 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 uh, there's just enough space there for the bees to actually get through. So sometimes you can get a big fat bulgy bit, you just don't want to squash it up against the, the window, but otherwise they can pretty much go in any order, which is a bit different to the brood nest. Okay, now, next one here. In we go, so we're just gonna simply drop all of these in. Then I'll show you how to get a nice flat window side. And some little tips and tricks when you're putting your last flow frame in. I see, this is a good question from Phil and Deb. Just wondering if the brood and the flow frames are drones and you put the queen excluder back on, when they emerge, how will they get out to fly as they won't fit through the excluder? Ah, that's very true. So the answer is they won't. They won't get out to fly. So if you notice in the observation window that there's drones running around, then that's probably what's happened. There's drones captive in the top. So the thing to do there is to pull the cap out of the inner cover and just prop the lid a little bit so that the drones can then escape and they'll probably come back and fly back into the bottom. So that'll uh, fix that issue. Uh, great. So keep an eye out for drones in the viewing window. Haven't seen any, that's another thing, but it's early days. We detected this quite early. So we may see that over time. Oh, and, and Vanessa's actually saying, so why don't you put the frame with the brood in the window so you can keep an eye on it? That's a good idea. Maybe on the other window. Yep, oh. fantastic, I'll do that. Ah. <laughs> yes, they normally like to have their brood in the centre. But let's just see what happens. Put that in the window and then we'll be able to tell what's what. There we go. So a little tip on putting the last frame back in. So, first of all, make sure that all your frames are pushed forward so they form a nice flat window. So if you haven't done the little adjustment screws at the back, you don't have to, but they are handy. And uh, so what that'll mean though, is you'll need to manually push them forward just with your hope tool like this. Then. What I find best is you put this viewing window end in between like that and roll the frame around and in and then slide it down. And that just helps you get your frame nicely lined up. And there you go, perfectly flat viewing window. And goes on the inner cover. Any more questions? Yeah, actually, um, uh, someone at Hobo's Gold tuned in and said had the same thing happen to them. There uh -huh. was no queen in the brood box, but a drone lay had laid in the top. Drone laying in the top. Yeah. And, and let us know what the result of that was. Did you, did you uh, rectify the situation? Um, Hugh's asking, um, see, it's got a brood, it has a flow hive hybrid, so that's like the three flow frames and the four um, honey frames, but it's still got um, eight brood frames in it. Set up the brood box with the hybrid, and it's been a couple of months and they still haven't made any comb. He, um, they moved three frames over from a flow hive they had had since 2020. Just wondering, is it normal for them to take this long, and if not, what should they do? Okay, so uh, if you find that other hives are doing well and drawing a lot of comb and storing a lot of nectar, then it'll be the genetics that's um, causing the, the slowness, in which case you will be best placed to uh, replace the queen. And that way you get a, a young Bureau of Queen laying lots of eggs, more bees, and a more productive hive. If other hives are slow as well, and it might be good to ask other people in your area, then it could be just a case of some patience waiting for some flowers to flower or you could start feeding your hive and ask around whether that's normal in your area as well. Here in the subtropics we rarely do any feeding of bees but in other areas they do so that could be an option for you as well. Okay. And Brad's, Brad's suggestion is with the brood and the flow frames could you turn the cells um, to damage the cells leaving the bees to clean them out? Hi. You'll actually find that um, you can turn the cells 
all the way and back again without actually damaging the brood, surprisingly. There's still enough room in between the moving parts because we've uh, made space that um, it won't necessarily damage them. Um, but it still doesn't fix your problem either of the queen in the wrong area. So best idea is to do what we did, shake them all down, come back in a, a few weeks and make sure you've got a, uh, a laying queen in the bottom. Great, and um, Aidan's uh, um, from Vermont in the USA. Just wondering, should flow supers be taken off for winter or can they be left on so the bees can eat it? Uh -huh, that's a debated topic. Now, <laughs> it is typical for people to downsize their hives in the winter time if you live in an area that gets snow and a long cold winter without flowers. So you might decide to take one or more boxes off and that could be your flow super and you might store that over winter. But if you decide to leave it on for the bees to consume the remaining honey in your flow frames, then the minimum you should do is remove the excluder for winter. We don't have to do that in a subtropical region. We can just leave it on all year round because we don't really get the winter as far as the bees are concerned. If you do get a long, cold, snowy winter, then what you'll want to be doing is uh, taking that excluder out so that as the ball of bees goes to consume the honey in the top box, the queen can travel with the ball of bees and stay warm. Otherwise, you might find that she's left behind in the cold and she'll perish and you'll start in the springtime without a queen. So a little bit of a, a tip there. So you can go either way, but you might like to get some local advice on, on what to do as well. Great, we Nate. also have the beekeeper.org, which has ah, yes. episodes specifically focused on overwintering. And that's a great um, online course, which gets um, rave reviews as well. And also a great fundraiser. We've raised uh, enough to literally create billions of blossoms for the bees already with over a million trees planted. Nice. Cedar Adrian's asking, how fast can bees fill a blank frame with comb when there's a good flow on? Say that once more. How fast can bees fill a blank fl uh, frame ah. with, with comb when there's a good flow on? Incredibly quickly. So the fastest I have heard of a whole box being filled is a single day, which is absolutely ridiculous. The fastest I see it in my area is a week. So it can get a really good flow on. The nectar's literally dripping to the ground off the flowers. The bees can go and get it really easily and come back and they can fill a whole box after you've harvested it in a week and it's ready to harvest again. We get that in the springtime, but um, in some cold places like up in Canada, you'll find that the season is so compressed. You've got such a long winter that everything has to flower at once and you get so much nectar available. That's where I've heard the stories of a whole super being filled in a single day. Let us know how it is in your area. Great, a few people just asking, um, I think from all over around the world actually about our Varroa situation and can we be moving hives at the moment? So we've still got um, restrictions at the moment and we've got management plans. So we've, we're still battling the Varroa uh, the DPI is confident that they're on top of it now and what the situation is is we need to go through and do a mic a mite check um, on every hive and we need to keep doing that so that and send the results in so that we can uh, catch it spreading uh, from where it is now further into New South Wales or beyond and that mite check is an alcohol wash which we uh, have put up videos before on how to do that. Um, but yeah, in terms of moving bees, we in, um, in the general area, not in the, in the red zone, we are allowed to move bees as long as we go through a, a process of doing an alcohol wash, checking for mites and um, reporting the, the movement to a DPI, or we can get permission, sorry, from the DPI to, to do that move. So, we're still battling it, fingers crossed, we get on top of it. Uh, great. And um, see, the hobo's tuned in, he was the one before who said had the same thing happen in a drone layered. Yep. Um, he's come back and said, yeah, with the help of the bee buddy, it ended up being queenless, so they added another queen. Um, lucky it was happening in the ideal box, and just wondering maybe we don't have a queen. 
it's quite possible. From what I didn't, I didn't find the queen, but I did find evidence of a queen. So I think we probably missed her, and now we've shaken the queen down the bottom. But it's a case of coming back in a couple of weeks and checking, or even a week, and look for eggs down the bottom, and that'll let us know whether we've got a queen or not. Uh, well done on sorting out the issue. And yeah, there's two reasons why you end up with brood in the flow frames. One is there's a queen up where it shouldn't be above the excluder. Perhaps she snuck through when she was small and she's laying up there. And the other reason is there's no queen at all and the workers are laying in the hive. So, uh, but they should lay all throughout the hive if the workers are laying, which I didn't see. So I'm assuming that we do have a queen there. And maybe that sort of, this is what Alison's saying as well, if there was no queen, would you have expected to see some queen cells in the brood? Uh, not necessarily. Um, it would be a great thing if you could see a queen cell because that would rectify the problem if it was queenless, uh, assuming it had what a queen in it. And it is called a queen cell when it has a queen in it, or it's called a queen cup when it doesn't. So sometimes you see queen cups, but they don't actually have the ability to actually raise a queen unless there's an egg in there. And if they don't have any eggs because it's gone queenless, then they're what's called hopelessly queenless and they're not going to rectify the problem. Uh, it can happen very rarely, immaculate conception, where the worker bees can lay fertilised eggs, can lay female bees, exact an exact clone of themselves. But it's pretty unusual, and bees aren't the only insect that on rare occasions can do that. Oh, nice. So Seeds, in saying that, if you do inspect it next week and you don't spot the queen, when will you decide to maybe reintroduce a new queen? If we inspect it next week, there's no queen, then we'll either introduce a new queen or get some brood, hopefully with a queen cell on it, but if not, some eggs on it from another hive, put it in the bottom here, and the hive can then have a go at making a queen from that. Nice. And so, Cedar, with that in mind, does that mean with this hive being a bit weaker, is it more susceptible to pests and diseases? Absolutely. Like I was saying earlier, good time to activate the pest management tray, catch some of those hive beetles. We would expect, because there was only a tiny bit of brood in here, the bee numbers to really be dropping now and that's when those pesky hive beetles especially in hot humid times like it is right now when they can get a hold and there's not enough bees to really chase the beetles around and keep them under check and they'll just start laying beetle eggs throughout the combs and it'll turn into a beetle nest which is slimy and horrible instead of a beehive mm. and it's just a bit of a clean up and start again situation then. So good idea to get a jump on that and put some cooking oil in the bottom here or detergent and water and catch some of those beetles. Great. Seeds, um, Petrus is asking, what are good plants and trees to, to, to grow for bees? Okay. If you, if you have a, a lot of land, you can plant some trees, then it's a fantastic thing for not only the European honeybees, but all the native bee species as well that really rely on forage. So I would always suggest planting the things that are native to your area. So look up what's native to your area and you'll find most trees will be nectar producing or pollen producing and good for the bees. You can also plant um, smaller flowering shrubs and things as well. I was watching the bees foraging on these yesterday and getting nectar out of even these little flowers. So anything with flowers is good, but you can specifically look up uh, really, uh, you know, in-depth information on what might be the best ones for good honey crops in your area, or ask your local beekeepers. Great. Oh, I've just got a, a comment um, from somebody who's just tuned in, coming a bit late. Really keen to get some flow hives um, in their village, um, but one of us they desperately need to do the course, otherwise they feel like there could be a disaster. Two thirds of the hives are doing really, really well. So hopefully that's the beekeeper.org course I think they're talking about. Fantastic. So much to learn. Yes, there's a, there's a great in-depth online 
uh, course there made to take you from square one right through to even the deep scientific knowledge in beekeeping. Gets rave reviews. Experts from all over the world have contributed to that with great video online training. And it's, uh, it's a great thing to sink your teeth into if you're keen to take your knowledge to the next step or if you want to start from square one. And uh, it's also free to try and it's a great fundraiser as well. And we've raised uh, enough to plant over a million trees so far. So we're pretty excited about that course. Thanks for mentioning. Yeah, and also mentioning that it's also good to let your veggies go to seed because the bees love that as well. And the veggies, I know myself, the rocket when you let it flower, the bees seem to love the rocket. They do, they love all sorts of things that flower in the garden. So letting, letting your brassicas go to seed, they, they really love that as well. So your, your, uh, those big yellow flowers, they just ride into it. Nice. So it's with the hive that you've just opened and you said there's some honey and you've left that one on the outside window, would you harvest that honey yet? Look, only if I was desperate and really needed to. The bees are a bit hungry at the moment, but what we tend to do here is there's an endless stream of people uh, wanting show and tells, um, both live and, and um, guests. So it's, um, we do find we might just be harvesting a little bit of that frame, maybe half of that frame, leaving the rest for the bees, waiting for the flowers to, to really produce nectar again. As soon as we see it coming in, we can go ahead and harvest that. When do you know it's time to feed your bees? Okay, bee feeding is when your hive is quite, uh, has not much honey in it and you're really trying to boost the population. So here we just wait for the flowers to come because all year round they come in dribs and drabs and uh, we don't really need to feed but there's two main reasons people feed bees. One is before the uh, winter time if you've got a long snowy winter ahead and you want to s make sure the bees have enough stores to survive through to the spring ahead in which case you might feed them just in, in the fall before the winter and um, get them to store a bunch of sugar syrup and you feed them a thicker sugar syrup. And the other reason is in springtime, and this is more of the commercial beekeepers like to get a jump on it, they'll feed what's a thin syrup. They'll feed uh, a higher water content simulating nectar, which will stimulate the queen to start laying. And what that means is you get a bigger population of bees just before the spring flowers really hit. So your hives will get a jump on it, get a jump on the season, and you get increased honey yield. So they're the two main reasons, but um, if you do have a hive that's starving, there's no honey. We had a good look in here, there's still plenty of honey, no need to feed this hive. But if there was none at all, we weren't finding any honey, there's no sign of any nectar coming in. And we might choose to feed them just to keep them going, keep them alive. One way in conventional beekeeping is just to lift the hive and see how heavy it is. It's called hefting the hive. That's typically what beekeepers do, they go along, and they'll lift the hives and go, oh, that one's really light, better feed it. And that's a very uh, crude but effective way to, to go and see which colonies have, have not much honey because honey's heavy, brood isn't, and you'll be able to tell which ones have not much honey simply by hefting the hive. Okay, last question. Okay, and look, it's a question that gets asked a lot in customer support, I think, that once you start feeding your bees, how do you know when to stop feeding the bees um, honey water, sugar water rather? Okay, so de it depends um, if, if the, the cold, so the, the two times of feeding I was talking about is one prior to a long cold winter, the other one was a prior to spring. So the time to feed prior to winter, time to stop would be as it gets, it's getting really cold and the bees aren't flying anymore. That's when you could stop feeding and you're just hoping that they've got enough stores at that point to survive through to the springtime. If you've got another answer to that question, please chime in. Springtime, you want to stop feeding when the bees are starting to store honey in the top box because you don't want to uh, be harvesting your honey and it's half full of sugar instead of beautiful honey. So as soon as the season's underway, the flowers are popping and they're starting to store honey, you'd be stopping any feeding activity then. 
Great. Thanks Thank for Thank you listening. very much for, uh, for tuning in. Let us know what you'd like us to cover as usual. Same time next week and we'll have something interesting to show you.